What's out of you the 500 metre distance? Yeah, and I think uh, you, you see the raw emotion there as well. Really comes out when you're absolutely exhausted, which is, is quite nice to see. And, and it's nice to hear who people are thinking about at the end of of a, a really exciting race. So. Yeah, you know, whether it's family support or friends who've been uh, along the way, and as we saw with Amy Fisher, all those emotions coming out at the end. Right, well, we may well see some emotions in here because Denmark are going for another medal. They've got four already, who knows? They may well get another one in this event. Danielenko and Kukarik, the Ukrainians will be in five. The Ukrainians have had a fantastic uh, K4, in fact, fantastic C4 and K4 yesterday in the men's. And until this morning, Ukraine were in fact top of the medal table, partly due to the women's uh, cr crew boats, of course, that they've got in the canoe. Um, then we've got the Germans. Never discount the Germans, no matter who the crew is. Tobias Schultz and Martin Hiller. Martin Hiller himself was the champion at the Under-23 World Championships just uh, a couple of weeks ago in Portugal. So watch out for them in six. Lane seven will be the Hungarians. Jasper Erodzi. Eridossi, I should say, and Balint Kopash, who's the Olympic champion in the men's K1 1,000 metres and silver medalist in the men's K1 here yesterday. So Balint Kopash is in good form. Never discount any Hungarian boat that's got him in it, of course. There he is on the right-hand side of your picture in position two of that white Hungarian kayak. And we've got Nicholas Matviv and Simon McTavish, Canadians there in picture. And they're in lane eight. And in lane nine, Marcus Valtz and Rodrigo Gemad. Now, they were winners of the World Cup in Hungary. Marcus Valtz is a multi-Olympic champion, yeah, champion in K1 uh, and also K4. So a real spread across. We could see lane one and lane nine battling it out for the medals in this one. Yeah, you never know. And also difficult conditions. So we're up at the 500 meter mark. This is the men's K2 500 meters. You can see the wave just lapping on the kayaks there. It's going to be a little bit of challenge to get underway here. And the tailwind, the times will be fast. It'll be important that these paddles are able to latch onto their catch, keep on top of that fast stroke rate. Yeah, pretty difficult conditions actually in a K2, I find. It's not my, not my favorite, a strong tailwind with lots of waves. <laughs> No, and all the paddlers managing pretty well there. The German boat getting a little bit left behind. K2, 500 metres here. It's not a long race. Only around 90 seconds, maybe just over that. So not a lot of room for error here. You've got to get away well, but you still have to settle into that race pace. And you can see right over the right of your picture there, that is lane nine. That's the Spanish. Watch out, Marcus Valtz, who, of course, was the Olympic champion in 2016 in his K1 over the far side of the course. Looks to me like they're leading at the moment. And then three lanes to their right, that's the Germans, Schultz and Hiller. There's Valtz and Gimard in pitcher. Wonderful in the K4 in Tokyo, which is a fantastic race to finish off what was a brilliant uh, regatta at the Olympic Games. They're leading at the moment, just their bow ahead of the Germans with 200 metres to go. Now let's see if they manage to hold on. Swedish, well, they're not completely out of this yet, but they've got a bit of work to do over in lane one. The Germans are coming strongly now. The, part, the Danish have some work to do over in lane three. They want to be lifted by the crowd. You can see the Germans in picture now. It's really beginning to hurt. The lactic is building up in their system. There's four or five boats in this. It's down to who can maintain their speed over the final 50 meters. And it looks to be like the Spanish just eating up the water in the final few meters there. They are going to take the gold medal. Slovakia coming through late, possibly just nudging out the Germans for second. But an exciting race, that one. Wow, this is back in the Olympic program for Paris. That is most probably why Valtz and Gimard were in this race. They took the win over in lane nine. We thought it might be the Swedes in lane one. You were right, Debs. Anyone can do it, whatever lane you're in, if you're in that final. And a great race, a well-paced by the Spaniards. Yeah, I don't think they were actually um, planning on doing this uh, after the games, but they had a bit of, from what I've seen from their social media, they had a bit of fire left in them for the season. So, yeah, good decision from them. It was, wasn't it? Certainly. Goodness me. 
So we didn't expect that. But then if they're used to paddling in the K4, jumping into the K2, and they're already in good form, they know they are, maybe it wasn't such a difficult thing. And they're so experienced, aren't they? And look at that remorseless, relentless pace, but in perfect rhythm. The boat running really smoothly on what was, as you said, quite difficult conditions. Yeah, definitely. I think they're really lovely paddlers, the Spanish. I think they've got brilliant technique and they just always look really, really strong at every stage of the race. Yeah, and the sort of look of determination, it was the same in the semi-final actually from uh, Marcus Veltz. Incredibly determined, does not want to give it up once he's in the lead. It's going to take something really special to get past him and nobody could do it. So hopefully we'll see them come to the podium in just a few minutes and have a little chat with Ross Solly and we'll get their feedback on their their feeling for the race and their feelings after what has been a really successful but long season for them. Yeah, great way to finish it off. Well, that's confirmation of the results. We'll wait for that interview just coming. So Spain in 1.29, that is a quick time ahead of the Germans in second. The Slovakians taking the bronze medal. So good regatta today for the Spanish. Yeah, you can hear that drum going from the, the fans on the bank. Well, it used to be the Hungarians had their own fan club, didn't it? But now it seems to be the German, uh, the uh, the Spanish, I should say. And yeah, great to have that little team support here and great to have a crowd because, of course, for much of the season we haven't. Well, here we go. We should get an interview with them now. Rodrigo, boys, come in, you're world champions. Congratulations, must be first race of a new Olympic cycle, a uh, new Olympic event, and you're a world champion. Uh, I have to say we're, we're quite surprised. We've done one of our best races uh, we've never done. Uh, we did after the Olympics, we, we went down a bit. We tried to hold that uh, you know, physical condition all as much as we could. But I have to say it was hard. After the heat, the semi-final, we, we didn't mm, feel so good. But well, today we've done, as I said, one of the best races we've done ever. We're super happy. It's a big Spanish crowd here. Do you want to thank them in Spanish? <laughs> yeah, we're, we've got a very good, uh, strong, loud Spanish crowd. And we, we're always super grateful for them. You can thank uh, them in Spanish if you like. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say to everyone that uh, the sportsmen, when we compete, we, we always feel very grateful because it does help a lot when everyone's cheering for us. So I want to say thank you to the Spanish and thank you to everyone. Congratulations, boys. Well done. Thanks. Well, yeah, now Marcus Waltz, he has a German mother and an English father, I think. So maybe the Spanish isn't so good, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, wonderful result. Great to see, um, as I say, great to see the crowds here, something that must have been missed in Tokyo. Yeah, it was, it was quite sad paddling down, seeing so many seats and no one in them. Uh, it would have been a really, really amazing competition. But um, yeah, I think the, um, the coaches and the athletes who weren't racing made enough noise for the athletes that were. Well, I so. bet they did, yeah.